Hello again. I guess it's time for us to chat, as is our routine. Not to imply that this is unwanted. In fact, I think I'm growing rather fond of you. <laughs> hmm. You and I have shared a grand nothingness, and I feel as though your belly is a suitable embassy amidst the unknown above. Admittedly, and please do not take offense, your innards sometimes frighten me. Even in the complete safety of a belly unto myself, there are places like this that I do not want to know. Would you be angry with me if I removed his work? I'm not exactly a fan. Uh, before I assumed this portion of your stomach, he existed as a parasite, eating away at your flesh before making his escape. I'm told that he refused to accept the sustenance you haul in from the outside. Some say he went insane after attempting to live off of the unclean water. <sighs> Poor fool.
I wonder if the Dwellers would cluster together like rats if they really understood the true value of isolation. All of their pathetic little wars and ridiculous assumptions of superiority would be washed away if they all had their own private labyrinths to roam around in. Granted, they could never understand the importance of the individual, the megalomania of justice in the guild, order, and, yes, even the unknowing. It's far too strong. There really is no point in even attempting dialogue. As a child, before the lots were cast, my parents moved around a great deal. The state of motion was not constant, of course, but it was frequent. Honestly, I loved the newness of it. I loved feeling like a sculpture, clay added over and over, but with an artist always ready to carve from my form that which I did not require, continually reshaping my psychology. Bags in front of me during the unfortunately early hours before departure. They seem to decrease in number with each successive voyage. I shouldn't be here.
please. I cannot swim this deep. Let me out. Please. Shall I ascend to your lungs and feel your breath? I think that would be lovely. <laughs> Simple little animals, aren't they? Filthy, no doubt, but can you really blame them? I suppose that if I were to hate them for their nature, I would be just as filthy. It's an odd position. To hate a rat for being a rat is to make oneself a rat all the same.
What's down there? No one ever told me. Uh, not that I know anyone. Apparently, after the guild took this area from the Order, they felt the need to block off the tunnel leading to an access point dumping into the unclean water. Everyone knows not to drink it, so why block the path? I don't think I'm a particularly condescending person. I'm just frustrated. I don't understand why we have to keep doing this. This... conflict. Unfortunately, telling a group of people what they're doing incorrectly communicates that you, yourself, are doing that thing correctly. If only that were true. If only I was above this, rather than beneath everything. What is this? What are you protecting me from? I must see it. I must see what they've done. I must see the extent of Nineveh's fruits. And I must see what they've done to you. Tarshish is nothing but a distant glimmer on the banks of Void. There is nowhere now but you. And you must let me explore your guts like the parasitic worm I am. Let me see the decay. Let me see the stagnation. Leviathan! Open these doors! Open them now! What have they done? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's a horrible cycle, this existence. I reach out to connect with them. Again and again I try, only to discover that nothing has changed. So I return home. Progression is lost, and I restart the cycle. I just want to sail.
funny how they all hoard the same supplies. All of it from the old city, and all of it wasted. Would you grant me another ascent? I've explored your innards. Let me scale your back. It's always struck me as odd that evil is never self-aware. I mean, the most horrendous actions, these conglomerate endeavors of warring cabals, are caused by the best intentions. So all that's left is this grand suspicion of idiocy. Good intentions are moot under the control of a ludicrously stupid idea. But my contribution is hardly an appropriate contrast. I would like to argue that my contribution is non-existent, and thus superior to their negative impact. But the truth is, we're all infinitely terrible for not contributing at all, be it through neutrality or detriment. Perhaps I should kill myself. <laughs> it's a rather funny thought, actually. The standard reason for suicide entails depression. A sad portrait of a weak mind. But my desire for death is far more... utilitarian. I feel as though I am useless. And I, and I gather that this feeling is similar to what the others have felt. 
I do not suppose that any of them felt any particular brand of gloom before the end. Just a single shade of grey. At any rate, I prefer this situation to its emotional alternative. We Minotaurs are only different in that we're honest. We see what our species has become. We see the disease. And we see that there's no cure. What, then, hmm? Should I linger until I grow old and die, affecting nothing and assuming the role of sewage? No. I'm beginning to feel as though the only honorable route is a swift end. Time has changed from an agent of death to an agent of cleanliness, wiping away existence like some sort of cosmic and crematory disposal. And I best incinerate myself before the universe is forced to deal with me through age.
I don't know why we exist in self-destroying structure. We all share a fondness for that which is correct, and we're all certain that we have it. But there must be a way for that loyalty to flourish without burning the last shreds of coexistence between our species. That is, a species that is primarily defined by its diversity. I don't know if I'm arrogant for assuming that my desire for progress is any indication of my task as a catalyst, but I tried to find Tarshish already. Only in my attempted escape did you find me, and I do not believe that you found me without reason. These dreams act as mirrors. Like passive portraits of the complexities of the human mind, they paint self, just as ideas paint the universe. Dreams truly are the most honest form of introspection, even if I can only use them as an escape. Of course, if this mirror is to be trusted, then I'm just as vile as the others. The contrast between my reality and this one tells me that I do not belong here. The only thing I have that they do not is a fondness for this new world. I actually knew the man who lived here. I believe his name was Solomon, though he insisted that the matter was irrelevant. During the few times we spoke, he seemed ungrateful to the point of mental masochism. He, <laughs> he would consistently act as though you have somehow maliciously trapped him within your confines uh, to limit what can be done with the outside. <laughs> I, of course, know you better. You and I have a special relationship.
Before the fall, I had access to a monolithic complex of voices. My parents would simply drop me off with the instruction to learn. Vague, certainly, but the uncharted nature of the command provided me the freedom to let my interest plot the course. My travels picked up in speed as the voices became stronger, pulling me ashore to distant lands where discovery welcomed me with open arms. Yes, my dear Solomon, a marginal effect. One small step towards the unattainable, indeed.
How much do you know of the old world? Did you even exist? Were you thrown overboard when your fall occurred, floundering in a new and terrifying negativity? My transition was not a comfortable one, so in this we can feel a measure of companionship. Do you still believe in a world out there in the blue? Books on top of books on top of books. Voices creeping in from the vasts of a larger and more ancient world, now trapped in the claustrophobia of narrow minds and cold halls. The old world was worthy of the waters that still flow from the inland. These green pipes that provide us with the basic sustenance we need for a pointless existence are nothing but charitable structures for an already stagnant populace. In this sense, our ideas never change because we rejected the source for its fruits.
I have to believe that my dreams have some worth, lest I loose the same anchor into show. I have to believe the creation itself can bring life to cyclical demise. They all do the same thing. They all claim a certainty that makes the certainty of others moot. Yes, yes, again and again I know. Truth must be compatible with itself. But is that not illusory? Is truth itself not something that is, in essence, unattainable? My realism's present, but so are my dreams. And to claim otherwise is a dream all the same. <laughs> it's, it's as if they have dreamt of a world without dreams. It's as if their world is one in which truth has revealed itself in an anthropomorphic turn, allowing us all to see it clearly and grasp it amidst the darkness. Sad, yes, that we all see a different beacon. No, all I see is void, and I do not know what's left other than to give up and stagnate in your belly. I may not have their full sense of certainty, but as of now, I cannot present an alternative. Truth must be compatible with itself, but that is irrelevant when truth is outside our reach. Onward with conflict, then, and onward with my labyrinth. One of the larger, unknowing camps is nearby. Their lack of organization tends to make it difficult for them to avoid the conflicts between the Guild and the Order. Of course, the unknowing themselves make their own little raids. This results in it being difficult to maintain any sense of pity. Regardless, I'm sure the onslaught was horrendous. People never fight harder than when someone else attempts to uproot their anchor. Even if that someone only does so by existing.
All of our dreams at their core involve some sort of contentment. This is the one desire we all share, but is it a goal that really should be met? After finding contentment, what then? Where is there left to explore after the last temporary comforts of happiness have been extracted? Our island is plagued with the fruits of a collective mental landscape that defines us as desperately holding on to something correct. So there is no place to hide without truly secluding or perhaps risking the inland. On some level, I feel as though I cannot blame the dwellers. Their zeal for truth is commendable. They're fighting for something rather than keeping it to themselves. They're acting instead of hiding. Still, must cruelty be the manifestation of certainty? If only truth did not need to be compatible with itself. If only we didn't need an anchor to be right. If only we could... sail, instead of collecting dust on the memories of voyages past.
Is this... Is this dream truly manifesting? Could the voyage be useful beyond escape? I remember the exact moment. I remember the slight touch of ocean air passing over my skin as I stared aimlessly into the afternoon sky. It's interesting how, though generally more depressing, I actually preferred a cloudy sky to a clear one. Two vast expanses of blue separated do not have that quality of diversity that a more speckled display boasts. This is not to say that a cloudy sky is wholly unfortunate because there were moments amidst the grey that I learned to dwell in. I learned to live in the moments where the heavens would tear through the sky as if digging through dirt, creating little bursts of pastel light in the otherwise desaturated gloom. It's as if clouds are nothing but a frame. I wonder if without them, happiness would turn into a flat portrait of stagnation.
We're almost there, Leviathan. The final step between me and the old city is upon us. I wish I could take you along. Will you remember me? After all, I could never forget you. And how can I even begin to thank you for all that you've done for me? You protected me from a world that I was too weak to bear. But now the distant shores of another reality are calling me home. To something I've never seen before. A dangerous and unpredictable world lies ahead of me. But I'm ready to let loose the sails. My father once recited a poem to me about an older world. I believe it was called Dover Beach. I can still remember the imagery, just the words that escaped me. We stood at the shoreline, waves crashing in, each wave eroding yet another piece of what I once believed. I think my father saw what was happening to me. He saw the dwindling of my dreams, the death of discovery. I can no longer rely on Abba to build my dreams back up. Left with nothing, I convinced myself that there were no dreams.
here it is. The leap. Goodbye, my old friend. If this final dream before the new is to be trusted, then all life follows the pattern of broken progression. Some call it redemptive history, still others call it galvanization, yet the trajectory is undoubtedly the same. We exist on a familiar shoreline, with the waters lapping at our feet. We look back and see an explored and thus frozen world. Then, as if subconsciously recognizing the need for change, we dive into a prison of even further inactivity. My prison was my only friend, it seems, but even he saw fit to spit me upon a new shore. Perhaps Leviathan existed for me to discover him, even if that which I explored was my prison. Perhaps I simply needed to see the stagnation before evolving. When I was a child, I was given a rowboat. I wanted to sail. So the universe built me a galleon. How unfortunate that, when I got older, I no longer wish to explore.
I am going to explore again. I'm going to board my vessel and sail into an unknown world to dream all the more. I'll leave this dream behind to feel the sand of other shores in my hand and let it loose as I travel inward towards newness. First, however, I'll make one last dive into Abyss. Here lies my captor, the great sleeping fish. My foundation's been disintegrated. I'm left with nothing but void. However, the baby of belief need not be thrown out with the bathwater of certainty. An assertion from an assumption is still an assertion, making any deduction from that foundation subject to critique. I may not be able to deduce from a place that I know to be true, but that which I deduce from my dreams must still be compatible with itself. I think I was wrong. Dover isn't where my dreams died. It's where one dream took over. I dreamt that I had no dreams. I dreamt that Dover smothered my belief with certainty. In truth, a truth that I cannot know, Dover ran red. The dream of realism created a monopoly of comfortable stagnation that held me hostage until I could do nothing but cling to Leviathan's innards for safety. My belief was not truly killed, it was captured. One belief was deemed more true than another, and I convinced myself that I was correct. I convinced myself that I could be correct. What if this dream's monopoly was disintegrated? What if I could explore a multiplicity of dreams, never quite knowing which ones are a reality? Truth must be compatible with itself, but what happens when truth is unattainable? The Dweller's dreams could function within themselves, from their foundation, as long as the factions recognize that foundation as a dream. What point would there be in conflict if the dreams cannot truly be controlled? They have their dreams and they cannot assert which is superior, so why not sail?
truth must be compatible with itself based on a starting point I can't prove. I can't assert which dream is not a dream at all because they're all just dreams. Why not discover the dreams I can't control, rather than hiding portions of them away to let what I was certain of flourish? One last look at my cage. One last dive into the abyss of negativity. A terrible world full of terrible people, yes, but that can be changed. Epistemic humility can regress to the deconstruction of stagnation. What I previously thought to be stagnation itself, the lack of any true knowledge, is simply the deconstruction of an anchor, freeing us to traverse the unexplored. I swam the depths. I confronted the bottom of the redemptive check mark. I was far more negative than those who still cling to certainty, but that's part of the progression. It's part of the broken progression. In this respect, we cannot improve without first deconstructing. Now, all that's left is to rise to the surface, board my vessel, and set sail for a new and terrifyingly uncertain world. The old city has called. And I wish that more would have the bravery to join me on my journey. Thank you.